We are just beginning this very long journey toward the state capitol. And I am encouraged not only by the support, but by the momentum that's building before we've even got a district boundary. This is pretty remarkable. We have this kind of support before we even know what area we're going to represent. How many people in this room think Kevin Jeffries has done an outstanding job for us? Well, he's got some pretty big shoes, but with his guidance and leadership, I am going to try to fill those shoes, and I promise you, I will make you proud of your representative up in Sacramento. So people ask me all the time, why do you want to go up there and do this? Well, anyone can sit on the sidelines. Anyone can sit there and complain. It takes no time at all. You can do it in your off hours and you'll never make a mistake. But if you really want to get something done, if you really want to make a difference, you have to get off the sidelines, you have to suit up, and you have to get in the game. I want to get in the game. Many of you, many of you will recall that my wife and I got involved in our local area. And before I go any further, the Honorable Kevin Jeffries is in the house. <laughs> Many of you will recall that my wife and I got involved in our local community after our son witnessed a walk-by shooting in broad daylight just four houses up the street from us. And while the two armed men ran free in our neighborhood, we waited for a police car for 40 long minutes. And instead of putting our heads in the sand or complaining or moving, we took action. We supported candidates for public office. My wife served three terms on the Riverside County Grand Jury and then began her work with trauma intervention programs. For me, I was elected to the Lake Elsinore City Council in 2003, where we took a $1 million operating deficit and turned it into a $6 million surplus in just four years. We doubled our commitment to public safety, putting more boots on the street and building fire stations. Crime went down, our community improved, and the work that we did with many other dedicated professionals has helped to turn our city around. I'd like to say that my wife and I got involved and we made a difference in our community. Thank you, baby. So again, why Sacramento? In my day job, you heard Supervisor Stone mention, I help to manage a mid-size family-owned business that recycles wood scrap and turns it into a number of different reusable products. And sadly, more than once a month, I am greeted in our lobby by a man or a woman with a clipboard and a plastic ID badge. Now this, this could take only a few minutes, or this could take my entire day. It could be just my time that's going to be wasted, or it could be a hefty fine or penalty to our company. I'm talking about the overregulation of the state of California and what it's done to the business community, and it needs to stop. In one six-month period, my company received 19 separate inspections. Weights and measures, AQMD, the IRS fuel inspectors, Cal OSHA, code enforcement, Army Corps of Engineers, fish and game, blah, 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 blah. It was an inspection every other week for the first half of the year. One inspection lasted five and a half hours. While I'm dealing with each individual regulatory fiefdom, I'm only serving the bureaucracy by creating more paper. Not products, just paper. 
In this state, we have hundreds of well-meaning environmental laws, but I believe that we have lost sight of the goal of protecting the environment, and now we find ourselves killing the trees to protect the fish. And while I'm filling out all of those forms and reports and responses, I'm not helping my employer grow his business. I'm helping to feed the bureaucratic beast. And that beast needs to go on a diet because we can't afford to feed it anymore. We need to reform the regulatory environment in this state so that businesses can thrive again. We need to balance our state's budget and reduce redundant regulatory oversight that suffocates entrepreneurs. We need to establish a savings account in this state so that we can weather economic storms, not tax our people into poverty. And we need to continue to invest in education because that is our future. But we need to do this while reducing overhead. The cost of bureaucratic oversight cannot outweigh the front line of production. And in education, that front line is your classroom teacher. We must reward and retain good teachers and retrain or release poor performers, just like we do in business. We must invest in public safety. This means building more jails and prisons, regardless of the number of desert tortoise that may be affected. <clears throat> we cannot release convicted criminals to live among us before they have satisfied their debt to society. Something is wrong with government when prison guard pensions are placed before our citizens' expectations that criminals will serve the entire sentence the jury handed down. If, after completing his or her sentence, a prisoner is released, we need to fund the probation and parole agents so that adequate supervision is maintained. We must never have another J.C. Dugard situation occur in this state. We need to recommit to fixing our infrastructure for water, utilities, and transportation. <clears throat> we need to be building things, not growing our government. And local government can't continue to be shortchanged when Sacramento doesn't get it right. Our, <laughs> our friends in Menifee and Wildemar, who have been fiscally responsible do not deserve to have funding sources ripped away from them without input, comment, or professional consideration by the majority party in the legislature and our governor. While we have many, many public sector employees that do a fantastic job for us and have earned a comfortable retirement, we need to balance that agreement against what the state can truly afford. Pension reform must be part of any meaningful budget discussion. And we must stop pretending that illegal immigration does not represent a net drain on our state's financial resources. We need to secure our borders, enforce E-Verify, and live by the rule of law. So why Sacramento? Because I do not want to simply stand by and watch this state erode. While my son works to rebuild Afghanistan, I want to work to ensure that there is a vital and prosperous California for him to return to when he completes his service. We owe all of our returning veterans the promise of hope and prosperity in our golden state. Help me win. I will help California. Thank you all for being here.